Ableton Live really is a sound designer's paradise. And I think if you're someone trying to get more sounds out of your Ableton session, you just need more inspiring sounds for your music. You're definitely gonna wanna watch this video and take advantage of what I'm gonna show you. Something that is really useful about Ableton Live is not only how they allow you to process parallel effects through the audio effect rack, but also you can stack parallel instruments in the instrument rack. This really comes in handy for keyboard sounds, Electric is an Ableton instrument that comes with Ableton standard and a lot of Ableton users may completely overlook this module. Not only is it a fantastic Rhodes and Wurlitzer emulation, but this is a classic electric keyboard emulation which provides a really perfect warm lower mid-range sound so you can stack synthesizer sounds synthesizer timbres onto this instrument and create totally unique keyboard style sounds for your music another module that many ableton users also overlook is expression control which enhances how responsive your playing on the keyboard is to the sound of your synth and with that module you really have to understand how to balance its effects because the default mode might lead you astray so if you want to get the most out of it and you don't want to mess up your sound you're going to want to watch this video and see how you can take advantage of all of those things and balance them the right way make some really cool sounds and really enhance what you can do in Ableton Live with your sound design because you know as I always say when you have great sounds you're much more likely to find a great idea for your next track Okay, so here we have an example of combining the two sounds together. This is electric right here, and you can see it's on W, which is the Wurlitzer emulation. Now, the secret to doing this is the ADSR. You can see here I have Meld, which is a really cool new synthesizer from Ableton, and the Amp Envelope. If you don't know what an Amp Envelope is, it's the thing that changes or it decides how the sound plays. You know, a lot of different sound types, like a bass or a lead or a pad, they all have their kind of shape to their Amp Envelope really decides the type of sound. I made a video on this, you can check it out. Basically, if we go to electric, we don't see the ADSR. We see a bunch of other useful things about this electric sound, but if I hit the key, it has a fast attack. It has a four second-ish kind of decay because it's already died away, there's no sustain. And if I hit the key real quick, there's essentially no release. It's just the sound of the effects, the delay that you're hearing in the background there kind of decaying away. But the actual hit of the keyboard, there's no decay on it. So you could picture, I'm actually gonna put it on the screen, the ADSR for electric. Combine this with the ADSR of something different. In this case, we have sort of a horn, kind of a horn synth sound. And those things combined together can create a really lush, beautiful sound. So that's really the basis of how you can create really unique keyboard sounds. The other thing, which I'll open up here on the left, is expression control. A lot of people in Ableton don't know this thing exists, but if you are someone that's using velocity information in your MIDI clips or you're playing a MIDI keyboard, you're a keyboard player, you like to play your ideas into things, this is a huge deal because essentially you can map anything on the chain, including the effects which I have at the end to glue the two sounds together, like the saturation the chorus, glue compressor, all that kind of stuff, you can affect those parameters, virtually anything in this chain using expression control. And in this case, I have a bunch of stuff for my velocities and I have a bunch of stuff for my key tracking, which is pitch. So basically when I go up or down in pitch, I change the balance of the sounds, right? So just a quick idea, some things you can do. Velocity, affect the drive of meld. If I go over here, you can see the drive has a little blue dot on it, shows that it's tagged to expression control. I can also do other things velocity to voice spread so the spreading of meld can get way more dramatic if I hit the keys a lot harder it creates a stereoizing effect it's kind of interesting um, the tying volume on electric this can also be affected so I can modulate both instruments at the same time using expression control tying uh, volume or tying amount tying tone and the volume the global volume on electric those are all affected by the velocity and then if I go over here on this expression control 
control. It's all key tracking. So if I'm higher up, I'm gonna, you know, turn Mel down by 50%. By default, it's on plus 50%, but you can adjust this in either direction and really balance it to how you wanna play the patch. And that can really inform how you play. Key track volume. In this case, it's gonna also do a volume effect, negative 35. And you can see, there we go, velocity affects the frequency of the filter. So all of these things are affecting how I play the instrument is going to really change the sound. In particular, if I start here in the mid-range, but I move up in pitch, and I hit the keys harder, it just gives me a lot more of the electric keyboard. It de-emphasizes the horn synth sound and changes the timbre of electric itself. So as I move down, the sound gets warmer and more synthier. So it's a really, really neat thing you can experiment with on your own patches. If you want to download this sound, I'll put the link down there. You can download it for free, check it out for yourself, get started with this idea. But that's basically where you can go from, and there's a bunch of other things that you can do. Now here's another patch example where the attack is slightly slower. So the synthesizer is ramping up in volume after the initial hit of the electric keyboard sound, it almost creates a kind of reverse effect. You can even accentuate this by moving the curvature of the attack line down and it kind of ramps up about two and a half seconds after the initial hit. That's a really cool reverse kind of effect you can create, which can create really interesting sounds. Here's an example of that in action. One of the most obvious things is to match that ADSR that we talked about in electric. You can't see it here, but you can kind of now in meld because I'm matching it here. So you can see a faster attack, kind of a decay around four seconds, no sustain. This one has a little bit of release on it, but it's primarily giving me an interesting timbre to the sound of the synth. And here in meld in particular, we have our bubble oscillator, which creates like a really interesting bubble sound. And you know, this is just an amazing synth. It has a whole menu of macro oscillators that create some very unique timbres. And then I'm just kind of matching it to the electric keyboard sound and it creates a really interesting balance. Here's another example of this in action. I have basically the same kind of ADSR, like four second-ish decay. In this case, I'm using an FM style oscillator. It creates a really lush kind of lo-fi effect. And here's another example, same idea. You can see the envelope shaped where it is, but the interesting thing about this I forgot to point out is that on the instrument rack, you know, each lane can get its own series of effects before you draw those things together with maybe some EQ and saturation on both of them together. So before you glue the sounds together, you can really create an independent sound design. In this case, you can see here in Meld, if I solo this lane, I actually have its own reverb going through it. So it's giving it a lot of spaciousness before it actually hits the sound of the electric keyboard. So you can get a really nice combination. These things are working together with the same ADSR in the envelope, but they have their own reverb chains. And then I glue them together with the effects and you can get a really cool sound. So yeah, it's a pretty useful idea if you understand what that ADSR is for your typical traditional electric keyboard sound, that Fender Rhodes sound. It has its own envelope. If you match it with the synthesizer, you can stack the sounds, get unique timbres, unique sound design, or you can mess around with it, change the attack speed. You can get more of a horn opening effect. You can get more of a pad type effect with an even slower attack, or you could actually just make it more of a pluck on the synthesizer, have a really short decay, and then create a really unique attack sound 
for that electric keyboard sound. There's a million things you can do with it. If you guys like the sounds in these videos, you can check them out in the link in the description below. There's a bunch of stuff there on the Patreon, MIDI clips, presets, long tutorials. I do a bunch of stuff on there. You can check that out. If you like this video and you want to hear more about it, hit that like button and subscribe for more. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have fun making music. Thank you.